If you're looking to play Diablo 4's new Vessel of Hatred expansion with a larger party, but no actual people, well, that's a specific request, but you can totally do it. Mercenaries are back in Diablo 4, and appropriately enough, there are four of them to unlock. Here's how to do that and how they work. Rahir the Blacksmith cannot be missed. He's unlocked as part of the expansion's main questline. From the start of the DLC, follow the critical path until you reach the new Nahantu region, at which point you'll start the quest Thrust Into the Dark. This will lead you to the mercenary hideout known as the Den, and start a very quick quest called The Hand That Remembers the Blade. Simply talk to Rahir and recruit him to your team to complete it. Rahir is a very tanky companion, using his shield to rush enemies and knock them down. As you progress through his skill tree, you'll be able to add additional buffs like armor for yourself whenever he charges, or debuff effects on enemies like slowed movement. Rahir can also use his shield to bash the ground or take a defensive stance to absorb some damage that would otherwise hit you. Unlocking all the other mercs starts in the den. For the demon child Aldkin, examine the Archive of Kuochosa on the right side of the room. This will start a new quest called A Nameless Mystery. Following these quest markers south of the den will take you to a hidden passage before ultimately ending at a burned down manor, with plenty of fights along the way. After a boss battle against Vilnus the Hunter, you'll return to the den with Aldkin ready to fight. Aldkin's demon powers come with a trade-off. He sometimes loses control, unleashing a curse that makes both you and the surrounding enemies vulnerable. Be ready to play more defensively if that happens, otherwise you can enjoy making use of his fiery magic spells. Alternatively, he can haunt your enemies to slow them down and deal shadow damage. Subo is a drunken bounty hunter, and you can recruit him by completing the quest A Feather on the Scale. Read the muddy letter on the left side of the den to start it. Show the helmet that was with the letter to Rahir to get your waypoint. We're headed to the toxic fens in the southeastern pocket of the map. Once you locate Subo there, you'll have to join him in his bounty hunting. This involves fighting off some bandits, as well as clearing the windswept altar dungeon. After beating its boss, Alvashtha the Malformed Serpent, talk to Subo back outside to wrap things up. Back at the den, you can add Subo's rogue abilities to your repertoire. He fights with traps and ranged weapons like molotovs and arrows, letting you deal a variety of fire and explosive damage. The final mercenary is Variana, and you can read her brutal note in the middle of the den. This initiates the Slayer's Retribution quest. The first step is to head to the Temple of Rot, a stronghold located between the Fields of Hatred and the Untamed Scarps. Clear this dungeon and take out its leader, Molkarth the Hungerer, to proceed. After rekindling the Wanderer's statue, read the Blood Scribe sign at the temple's southern entrance. This will point you to the Fetid Larder, where Variana is being held. To free her, defeat the enemies and destroy the pillars holding her down. She's a berserker, so she'll attack you after being freed. She'll calm down after enough hits though. She wants revenge on the cannibals who kidnapped her, so that's what we're gonna do. The preceding quest markers will take you to a feast hall and an arena. There you'll fight Grelkar and Zolmog respectively. With that, you'll finally have Variana at your side. As stated, she's a berserker. She can swing her axe to deal big damage, with the option to smash the ground or fling harpoons at the enemy as well. If you want to go completely on the offensive, she's a great pick. Speaking of picks, you might be wondering how to actually bring these mercenaries along. It's simple. Talk to any of them in the den and select Hire. This will place them at your side as a dedicated party member, but you can only have one at a time. The other option is to select them as a reinforcement, and like before, you can only have one active at a time. Reinforcements work like rune words, letting you choose a trigger that will unleash one of your partner's skills. This works great if you want to double up on an attack or give yourself some breathing room to dodge away and heal. Finally, it's important to know how to level up your mercs. They grow stronger using rapport, which functions just like your own XP and skill points. Both your hired merc and your reinforcement will earn it as you fight, but the rate is higher for the party member who's actually in the field with you. The more rapport you have, the more you can fill out their skill tree. Theirs aren't as robust as yours, and you'll have to decide which skills to invest in. Each tier of the tree lets you choose between two additional buffs tied to a particular skill. You can always respec if you want to try a different combination though. You'll also receive pale marks as you raise the rapport of each mercenary. This is a special currency you can only spend in the den. 
Rahir's daughter will be there to sell you legendary items. So the more you use mercenaries, the stronger they get, and the more special stuff you can buy. That's a win-win. And if you want to win all of Diablo 4's challenges, be sure to visit our wiki on IGN. We have all the hottest tips and tricks for conquering Vessel of Hatred.